Now, this is a very interesting interview. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the post-prison interview with the convicted Russian arms dealer, the merchant of death, Lord of War, Victor Bout. Now, we all know the story about Victor Bout. He was released from U.S. prison and given back to Russia after 11 years for the WNBA basketball player, Brittany Griner. Now, the deal was supposed to be Brittany Griner and the U.S. Marine, Paul Whelan, who was convicted of spying for Victor Bout, but that didn't happen. So basically, we traded an international arms dealer, a guy who's been called a terrorist, for a weed smoker, and that was it. Pretty embarrassing, but different story. I digress. The whole point is that he gave an interview to Russian state media, RT, Upon his release. Now, full disclosure, I've been on RT before. It treated me very well. And that won't really affect my take on this interview. But I'll give you the full disclosure so you can make your own mind up about my credibility or not. And before I go any further, let's roll the clip. If you want to see this clip in full without my commentary, the link, as always, will be in the description. But let's go ahead and roll it. Do you hate America? No. You know, in fact... And knowing many inmates, I figure out we're sharing way more common. Maybe America is very much similar. Look, it's the same size. They have a, it's the same kind of this. And when you talk to them, there is nothing there even to beef about. We are naturally, you know, born not to be enemies. And whenever there's conflict, it's elites. You know, every, you know, American I met in a prison who is uh, from rural area was very easy to deal with. He has no problem with Russia and he was curious about Russia despite all propaganda. Now, what he's saying right here, I don't say anybody can say that it's wrong. You may not like Russia. You may not like Victor Bout. You may think he's a terrible person, but what is he saying here that's wrong? And also a little bit more, he may talk about that. He might not, but he said that he didn't do anything wrong as far as his conviction for arms dealing, fueling wars in Africa and Middle East. He said he didn't do anything wrong. Everything was above board. And he said that the, the judge in the U.S. said that there was nothing there. That's what he said. I'm not saying that's the truth. I'm just saying that's what he said. Let's keep on going here. They're losing their Christian values. They're losing their families. They're losing literally their countries. It's not anymore the same country. We knew America who used to be a model for entire world and lead and be an example, you know, like they say, a shiny town on the, you know, sparkling town on a hill. And this is, of course, pity. It was a strong country who was really a, you know, industrial might, you know. Now, some are going to say, well, ABO, this is, this is propaganda from Russia. Don't believe it. State media. Maybe it is. I wouldn't doubt it, but just ask yourself, is he lying? <laughs> is he lying? Because if he's lying, then you could just throw it out. But if he's not lying, then can you throw it out? I don't think so. Oh, this one. And look, for 30, 40 years, deindustrialization, drug problem, crime waves. You can understand, and I feel more empathy to American after this experience than I would feel any hate. What would you consider as the most important event of the years that you have spent in prison? Uh, which events? Uh, international? Well, it doesn't matter. Maybe international. 2014. Oh, okay. Why? Well, it's, I guess, uh, would be in history as a turning point. It's a turning point of Russia. Finally, stand up with knees. Proud, strong. 14 years ago. So 2014, what was that? Was that when they annexed Crimea? I think so. Y'all fact check me on that, please, in the comments. When you were, if you would have known that it's going to happen with you, I mean, you're going to spend 14 years away from your family, from your motherland, would you have, uh, would you do something differently in your life? It's difficult to live on the callings of your heart. But if you listen in your heart, no, you know, Yes, you're going to, sometimes you get into trouble, but you never betrayed yourself. You know, and this inner peace gives you enough strength to go through everything. 
Why? Because you don't have a conflict inside of you. Doesn't matter what. You have peace and tranquility because you trust in your heart. You trust in callings of your blood. You trust in, and you're never fighting who you are. Well, there you have it. That was very interesting. Now, there's a few more clips here, and I think these are going to be in the Russian language, if I'm not mistaken. So, of course, uh, I think it's going to be actually dubbed. So, it'll be a person speaking over him. That's not his actual voice, if you understand what I'm saying. Let's go ahead and roll it. I don't believe that they'll have a revolution in the United States, if you ask me. So they've been able to keep it under control, despite, for example, all the drug issues and all the overdoses. It, it is all according to a plan. When young people become drug addicts, they lose their will to do anything. I've been saying that for years. I've been saying that for years. You guys watch me for a long time, been here for a minute. You know, I always talk about drugs. Drugs are bad. That's me. I am Captain Sober. I say drugs are bad. Drugs are terrible. They demoralize you. They stunt your ability to grow. They stunt your ability to be innovative. It just, it crushes a nation. Drugs. We see what's going on right now with fentanyl and the whole country being destroyed by it. Number one cause of death for adults between the ages of 18 to 49 is fentanyl or excuse me, opiates. But we you know that's, that's basically fentanyl, heroin, fentanyl, anything that's like that big cause of death. Number one cause of death for all adults age 18 to 49, not car accidents, suicide, fire, none of that fentanyl. So what he's saying here is correct. And if you were a nation on the outside looking in, let's say, let's say you're China or if you're Russia and you mean the U.S. harm, what better way to harm us than to flood us with drugs? Okay, it's been done before. They had whole wars over it in China because of the British trying to flood them with drugs, trying to make money. They made a bunch of money in U.K., but in the process, it destroyed people over in China. And the same thing's happening right now in the U.S.A. So what he's saying there is verifiably obviously correct one more clip well two more clips this is very interesting about uh prison culture about all the snitching that goes on people talking about oh don't snitch stop snitching everybody snitches so if you are a young person out there gauging in crime thinking that anybody gonna tell on you they're gonna tell on you and they're gonna be emphatic about it if they can get a month off of their 25 year sentence they'll tell on you in a heartbeat then people will tell on their whole grandmama here in the usa so the whole anti-snitch culture is complete BS, but I digress. There were very few white people, just ordinary Americans. There were local Indians as well, the indigenous uh, people. But uh, this is a, a special prison, and these are, uh, this, is, this is a prison mostly for sex offenders or those who could not stay at other prisons. For example, they betrayed someone or, uh, and I gave even a nickname to them here in the United States uh, uh, that everyone reports on everyone. It's not just about inmates, but about guards. Uh, they report on each other, on their colleagues. Uh, are you talking about the rule 35 that were very interesting so maybe in that particular prison the culture is much more rampant as far as its niche culture but that happens so if you're out here doing wrong you're doing the wrong thing it wouldn't be the police that gets you it'd be your own friend your co-worker your family member yourself you got guys that tell on themselves on social media going to TikTok, instagram and whatnot flashing the fruits of their stolen labor that they, they flash all that the police are just sitting there watching half the time. The police could just sit at a desk all day and browse social media and find the evidence right there and lock you up based on that. I've seen that. I've seen guys get locked up based on Instagram direct messages. So yeah, that's, that's something. And here's one more thing. This is, it's, it's very interesting about how people in prison view the mainstream media. Very interesting clip right here for example in my prison there were 35 people and no one believes cnn or other networks on ukraine on elections everyone knows that 
all of this is not true. For I believe it. I believe it 100% because people, I mean, I don't believe the media. I, I stopped believing the media years ago, years and years ago, even before I became openly conservative and talking online. I stopped believing in the media a long time ago. Okay, Fox is decent, but even they go in there and say some weird stuff sometimes. I mean, just by virtue of having Caitlyn Jenner on there, it's like, okay, you're talking about she, she, she. Meanwhile, I'm looking at a whole decathlete right here, six foot three with these big broad shoulders. Okay, you're not fooling the soul. <laughs> but as I close, I'm going to say this. That was a very interesting interview. I'm sure there's more clips available. I'll link to whatever I can find in the description box. You may not be able to get RT in your country if you don't live in the U.S. or if you live in the U.S. Might be kind of hard, hard to find RT. They've been censored from everything. And that's part of the point. We realized that a lot of the mainstream media is bogus and they work hand in hand with the politicians and big tech to X out competition, to X out those that they don't want to be seen by the general public. We all understand that. And they see it as well in prison. A lot of what you see on television is just what the ruling and the elite class, what they want you to believe rather than the actual truth. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? How do you feel about that interview? Do you think that he was telling the truth? Was it propaganda from Russia? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys pretty much know where I'm at. That was a true interview. Okay. Is it propaganda? Maybe. But does it make a difference if it's true? I don't care what the purpose of the thing is. I don't, I don't care why the interview was done. That's not even really important. All I care about is, is it true? Did he lie? Was it accurate? That's all that matters. If I say two plus two is four, it doesn't matter why I said two plus two is four. The fact is that two plus two is indeed four. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.